Today we are looking at oscilloscope. It is literally called oscilloscope. <laughs> it's an oscilloscope. Uh, this one's by Soka Labs. It's totally free and it's got a couple of useful features. Uh, the ability to change the number of samples, which effectively acts like a zoom in time. You can change what channel it's triggered off of, including using the average. Uh, the up down, if you want it triggering when the signal passes the threshold going up or down, a zoom for the actual uh, vertical. You can trigger it normally, which which is to say it will re-trigger continuously as you play something through, or you could trigger it on a single run. And if you do this, you notice this zoom no longer functions. That's because it kind of takes a, a picture of the current settings and you can hit reset and it will take a new picture. You have the ability to do an offset so you can see the stereo image. If you hit reset again, it, it smooths itself back out. And then we've also got an offset right, the level at which it triggers. So you can see this gray bar until it's touching the waveform, it won't stabilize. And the trigger position, which is this right here. Now, this is pretty interesting. It kind of, because of the triggering mode, uh, it only uses a threshold. That means that certain waveforms will never look stable over it at close zoom settings. So let's say that we have this is our input waveform. Pretty wild. Now, we might try and stabilize it by setting a threshold so that it triggers consistently. That causes the screen to write from the same spot in the waveform, making the waveform look stable. That's one of the tricks we could use. But if we do that and we move this trigger level around, oh, look at this one. This one, we can solve it. As long as our waveform crosses consistently in the same locations and there's no intermittent spot where it crosses more than once, it will trigger and stabilize in a good way. But we'll get this flickering behavior if that's not true, which is, which is true for a lot of cases. A lot of waveforms are more complicated and so you'll be zoomed out a little more. And when you're zoomed out, if we take a look here, it also becomes less of an issue. Oh, we get the movement here though. Oh, this is so interesting. If we zoom in though, it's fine. If we come into operator two, edit the sine wave harmonics and just give it some really high frequency wave, we get this shaking. And this, it can become a, a problem. You can't stabilize this usually. Um, so if we were to, again, attempt this, it gets crazier the more times it crosses in a single cycle. You could try doing things like uh, triggering off the average um, which I've, I've never seen that as an option. So that's kind of unique and trying to change where we trigger could be an interesting try thing to do. But if you have that, the trigger mode, it's just not going to stabilize. So besides that one thing, it's honestly a fantastic scope. It's got some great features, very simple, open it up and it just sort of does what it's supposed to do. Here is the website. They've got a bunch of free plugins, by the way, and a pretty sick wavetable synthesizer. Uh, but you can sort of see the features. It's pretty much just what we said, Mac, Linux, Windows, and the source code, which is pretty dang cool. So that's Oscilloscope. Let me know what you think. Subscribe to that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.